Welcome to The Real News Network, coming to you today from Washington, D.C. We're in the, our studio, the McClatchy Newspaper Offices, and we're now joined by Mike Doyle. He covers legal affairs for the McClatchy Papers. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. The Supreme Court, over the last hundred years or more, has, has a series of decisions that considers corporations to have essentially the same rights as people. So that includes the right to free speech. So what's in dispute at the Supreme Court, uh, and a decision that's expected sometime soon, is whether or not that right of free speech of corporations can be limited in the way that the law could limit their right to spend money on mostly television advertising during an election campaign, and is that constitutional or not? So is, is that the gist of it, and if so, what's happening? Well, that's essentially it. The case is called Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. Citizens United is a interest group on conservative persuasion that uh, got into this case, but when it made a 90-minute movie attacking Hillary Rodham Clinton uh, as in the lead up to the Democratic primary uh, election. That was considered, in essence, an advertisement and subject to the campaign finance laws that prohibit it being aired a certain length of time prior uh, to the election and required the disclosure of the people who funded it. Citizens United challenged those regulations. Argument was held in March. The Supreme Court, in a very unusual decision, said, come back, we're going to... Yeah, just, just to back up, because... Yeah. They challenged, they were told they had to disclose who had paid for the ad, the, well, and they the, challenged this? In, in essence, the, the, the challenge came before they had, were given the directive to, dis, to disclose. It was a preemptive challenge in, in essence. Uh, the argument was held on, on a fairly narrow case in, in uh, this spring. The, the Supreme Court said, in, in a very unusual move, come back, we'll now look at the broader case, and this is the one that you were uh, more referring to. The broader case is, are current restrictions on corporate campaign expenditures a violation of free speech rights? Corporations enjoy the right to speak politically. Part of speaking politically involves spending money uh, on campaigns, running ads, and so on. Those are restricted uh, right now under both state and federal law. Uh, and the court in September uh, heard the argument in a case that will soon be decided on whether those state and federal whether those state and federal restrictions are uh, unconstitutional. So what's at stake here now is uh, if a corporation can now give money through one of these PACs and kind of launder the money, and then the PAC does the TV advertising. That's right. If all these regulations are overturned, they'll now be able to take money, unlimited amounts of money from their treasuries directly, and just go buy ads. So if AT and T thinks there should be a, a something to do with the uh, federal communications uh, legislation. They can go advertise for it right in the midst of an election campaign that could sway voters one between one candidate or another. Yeah, we should say one thing this case is not about are campaign contributions to candidates. This is not about... Because that's already limited by other legislation. And it's not under, under challenge. This is not about a donation to a candidate. It's about what is called an independent expenditure. Currently, the law is corporations and labor unions can set up a political action committee, a PAC, put money into that, uh, and then that PACs can finance ads and so on. But they are prohibited, corporations and unions, from directly financing from their own treasury those campaign ads. If the court broadly strikes down current precedent, theoretically, that could result in AT&T or any corporations from spending freely from its own treasuries. And we should say, by corporations, we mean not just for-profit corporations or non-profit corporations as well. Sierra or Club, unions. The National, mm -hmm. or unions, the National Rifle Association, the Sierra Club, all of those will be affected by this ruling as well. But there's no guarantee it will be a broad ruling. It might be much narrower than that. Okay, so if, if in fact corporations and unions and others are already finding ways around the uh, current legislation by using these political action committees, why is this case considered so significant? Well, that's a really great question because the PACs have proliferated. There are thousands of them. They're, uh, so they're a part and parcel of a political process right now. And corporations seem to have no trouble financing their political activities uh, through them. There is a cost to them. There, it takes time, administrative uh, resources, and there's friction involved in setting it up. And so there's an impediment to, to speech, and it would be easier for corporations to spend from campaign uh, from their corporate treasuries uh, directly. And I think, so on the one hand, it would be administratively easier 
uh, for them to spend money directly, and also that there's a principle involved, which is why should, I think from the perspective of the corporations, they say, why should we be required to speak through the, the puppet instead of directly? Now let's back up one step. The, the film that started all this, the anti-Hillary Clinton film, wasn't that done through a PAC? Uh, no, it was not a PAC. Citizens United, the, the, which produced the, the movie, is a corporate. It's a nonprofit uh, corporation. Uh, so it's it's in theory bound by the current not in theory. Yes. It's bound by the current regulations, the same way a corporate big corporation would. be. It is, and and that's an interesting distinction. The Citizens United and, and or or some others observing the case point out the court may choose to distinguish between the for-profit corporations, the AT and T's of the world that have a vested financial interest and in a political campaign and a, and a, non, and a partisan but non-profit corporation. Of course, like then there'd be Citizens nothing to United. stop the corporation from donating to the non-profit. Uh, well, the, yeah. Unless well, you, there's something you, specific. Well, there you get into the issue of people finding loopholes on whatever the regulations are. But theoretically, the court could decide to, to rule more narrowly in this case and say we're not going to up, un, up overturn decades of regulations on corporate spending. However, we will make it uh, somewhat easier for nonprofit corporations to, to spend money. Now, if they do overturn decades of legislation, what's the significance of it? What does this lead to? Well, the significance of it is that uh, it will allow easier and greater spending on campaigns. There's already been an explosion in campaign spending in, in recent years, and this would potentially allow much more money to be spent much more freely. So if other courts who have, in the future, other cases to do with campaign finance, the fact that the court, if they overturn this legislation, they can be seen also to be leaning towards more opening up, and that might create a kind of mood. It could. It, it certainly would be a, a signal uh, uh, to the lower courts, not just a, an active technical precedent that they would be required to follow. One of the best known moments when the court had to decide something to do with elections, uh, obviously was George Bush's election in 2000, mm -hmm. where the cor court split right along partisan lines, and it was kind of an ex revealing moment to just how partisan the Supreme Court can get. How partisan is this issue? This is not, I would say, a truly partisan issue uh, so much as it is. It's a very confusing issue for the court. I would, I would expect a decision along the lines of a 3-2-3-1 three, three, decision where justices will be joining in part and dissenting in part, and it will become difficult to fully understand the implications and the holding, and also fully understand the, the factions they, they fall into. So I, w I would not say this is going to be an easily understandable partisan divide. If they do overturn current legislation, it could open up uh, even more room for money to influence elections. Well, that's that's the argument for those, including the Federal Election Commission, that seek to uphold the current law. They, the argument by the FEC, represented by the Obama administration, is that the, there is enough money already in the in the political process. The danger is not only that the contributors and the spenders will have greater influence, but they will be perceived as having greater influence and will serve to undermine public confidence in the electoral system. So the uh, corruption and the appearance of corruption are on the minds of those who want to continue to regulate uh, the, the spending. Uh, and in this case, that is the Obama administration. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.